With the Wilds of Eldraine set just coming out, there's so much I can say about the set, but for now I need to go over the Mastery Pass to talk about the value that's included in it, how to get the gems you need if you haven't got them already, how quickly you can expect to rise up the ranks and unlock all these rewards, and I'm going to give it the least generous values I can to really put it to the test. If you've seen my other Mastery Pass videos, this is along the same lines, but there are going to be some extra things included as well, so stick around for that. Let's get started. Okay, welcome back to the channel. Okay, so today we are looking at the Mastery Pass for Wilds of Eldraine, so don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future videos like this. We're going to break down all the value in the Mastery Pass. Um, not just what you get on the free set Mastery, which everyone gets, but also what you get in the paid Mastery Pass along the bottom track. So uh, let's go over the value you get in these really quickly. So starting with the free set Mastery, that top track that everyone gets. This includes 33 packs that you can get as you upgrade, as you go up the levels. There's also 10 uncommon ICRs, card rewards, that you can unlock as you go along, and three mythic card rewards as well, as well as a few other cosmetics. So we get the, the reward orbs that you can redeem in the mastery tree up here to get different um, styles, and also some different sleeves. And that's what we get along the top of the mastery pass. Uh, of this free set mastery and also when you get to level 31 you get this 2023 renewal sleeve uh, which I mean if you like cosmetics you might like that cosmetics aren't really worth that much in terms of kind of objective value so it's up to you if you think that's worth it but everyone gets that so it doesn't really matter what we really want to look at is what you get on the paid track along the bottom so you need to spend 3400 gems to get this and if we have a look at all the rewards along the bottom, you get some packs, you get some gems, you get some other um, random card rewards, like you don't know what card this is going to be. But then you also have some set cards that you get as rewards as well. There are other cosmetics with the orbs, you have a player draft token, and you also get like some pets up here and some gold. So there's a whole a variety of different things you can get in this paid track. And it goes all the way up to level 70. Now sometimes mastery passes are like level 80. Some of them might even have been bigger than that. It basically depends on how long the set is going to be the most recent one. So when the next one comes out, which is going to be in 10 weeks since the beginning of Wilds of Eldraine. That's how long it's around. So we've only got 70 uh, levels because there are only 10 weeks before the next set, Ixalan, comes out. So we're going to have a look at the value of these um, these rewards along the bottom and I'm going to break it down really quickly. I'm going to give it the least generous values I can because sometimes you can overestimate the value you get from things. And if you do that, if you miss some of the details, then you might be paying for something that isn't giving you as much value back as you think it is. And that's when you're looking at the mastery pass here because one of the main things you get are the packs. So you get packs from... The uh, most recent set, you get it from Wilds of Eldraine. There are only four packs from Wilds of Eldraine in the bottom uh, the bottom track. You also have cards from packs from March of the Machine. We have Phyrexia. And we also have Dominaria and Brothers War. So it's from those sets and from uh, the Wilds of Eldraine. But there's 20 packs in total. Now you might think that a pack is 200 gems in the store, so we're going to put 200 gems as the value on the pack that you get in the Mastery Pass. But this isn't the same because when you buy a pack in the store for 200 gems, you also get some golden pack progress. You basically get one tenth of a golden pack for every pack that you buy. And so every pack you buy in the store is worth an extra 0.6 of a rare, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it does add up. It basically means the packs you buy in the store are about 50% more valuable than the packs you get as rewards because these ones don't give you the golden pack progress as well. So if a pack in the store is worth 200 gems, then the packs we get as rewards from any event, but also from the Mastery Pass, I'm going to put them as a value 
of 140 gems because it's about two thirds of the value of a pack in the store. We then also get the mythic ICRs and there are 10 of those in the bottom track of this mastery pass and I'm going to give them a value of 100 gems each. I used to say they were 200 gems because most of the point of buying a pack is getting the rare or mythic that's included in it. So 200 gems for a pack, it kind of seems fair to put 200 gems as the value of the rare or mythic in the pack. But the difference is, if you're even if you get a reward pack here, you, when you open the pack, you get some wildcard track progress and you obviously get the other uncommons and commons in there, which might include wildcards. So there's lots of things we'll get in the pack that we don't get from just one mythic card. That doesn't give us wildcard track progress. It doesn't give us anything else apart from that one card. And there's also no chance that it's upgraded to a wild card, which is more valuable than any specific card. So I'm going to give the mythic cards a value of 100 gems each, which I think is pretty fair. So there's 10 of those in the set. So that's another 1,000 gems in value in the Mastery Pass. And then we have these other rare cards. Now there are five different cards, and there's four copies of each. So that's 20 rare cards that you'll get. And they are specific ones. They're not, they're not random ones like these mythic card rewards are. And you can see which ones they are. It's kind of small, but you can, you can just about see what they are. So when we complete the Mastery Pass along the bottom there, we are going to have 20 extra cards, 20 extra rare cards. And I'm going to follow the same um, value that I've given to the mythic cards and say that each of those cards is worth 100 gems. Now, the, the thing is, you might not use these cards. Like if you don't play blue, for whatever reason, if you just don't like playing blue, then these blue cards aren't worth anything to you, right? So the value, although I'm trying to be as objective and fair and balanced as possible, it might not be worth as much to you. So we'll see how it all adds up at the end. And you can see if you think the whole uh, total value of the mastery pass is worth it to you, but I think it will be. I'll have a look at these cards in more detail in a moment. And then we've also got the player draft token. So if you wanted to enter a premier draft, you would have to spend 1,500 gems or 10,000 gold. So I'm going to put, just because I'm putting everything in gem value, I'm going to say this is worth another 1,500 gems. And if you happen to be really good at draft, it's going to be worth even more to you in the end when you do the event, if you get more than 1,500 gems back. But that is the cost of entering it. So that's the value I'm going to put on the player draft token. And then we've also got some gold. So there's two lots of 2,000 gold you can get from the mastery pass. So that's 4,000 gold which roughly translates to, eight th to 800 gems, not 8,000 gems, 800 gems. Um, so we're going to add that to the value as well. And then we've also got three different instances of getting 400 gems in the Mastery Pass. So that's 1,200 gems that we get back in rewards as well. There's also lots of cosmetics. There's actually 56 different cosmetics you get. The Mastery Orbs count as one, and then you get the other card styles here. You've got Pets. We've got sleeves, we've got all kinds of things. So there's 56 different cosmetics. Now, if you have a look at what is normally charged for cosmetics in the store, they're crazy prices. You'd never really spend that much on cosmetics. Like a, a sleeve might be 3000 gems or something crazy. So I'm not gonna include anything as the value of the cosmetics because I would never spend gems on them uh, apart from a couple of very rare um, exceptions. I wouldn't spend loads of gems on a pet or a sleeve like this or like card styles like this. I just I just wouldn't. I don't see the point. So I'm not going to include any value for that. But if you do, if you do spend gems on cosmetics, then this is going to save you a lot of gems, not having to buy them in the store. So when you add up all of those values together for everything included along the bottom track, 140 gems for each of the packs. There's 20 of those. 100 gems for each of the mythic ICRs, and there's 10 of those. 100 gems each for the rares that we get, and there's 20 of those we're going to collect. 800 gems to equate to the 4,000 gold we get. 1,200 gems we get back as well. The player draft token for 1,500 gems, and then cosmetics that get thrown in for free. The value of all of those things added up is 9,300 gems. So if you've spent 3,400 gems on getting the Mastery Pass, you've got a profit of 5,900 gems. 
Now, like I said, the value is subjective in a way. If you don't really like playing drafts, then the draft token might not be worth as much to you. If you don't play certain cards, like if you don't ever play the rares that you get here, then technically they're not worth much to you. But even if you took out the player draft token and all of the extra um, four copies of the rares that you get there, that's 2,000 for those, 1,500 for the player draft token. So that's 3,500 gems you could take off the value if you didn't think they were worth it to you. And you would still be making 3,400 gems worth of profit. And this is being as harsh as I can on these rewards. I'm not saying they're worth 200 gems for packs. I'm only saying they're 140 gems. I'm not saying that the mythic card rewards are worth any more than 100 gems. So they are quite low values for these things. And even then, we are well in the profit in thousands of gems. Now, obviously, the value you get from the Mastery Pass depends on how much you complete. So as you complete your levels, as you gain XP from your weekly wins, your daily wins, and your daily quests, you're going to go up levels. If you don't get to the end of the Mastery Pass, then you're not going to unlock all of the rewards and so you would miss out on some of the value if you didn't get to that point. So it's important to work out the best way of getting to the end of the Mastery Pass and knowing that it's possible. So um, for each week that we play the Worlds of Eldraine set, and there's 10 weeks when it's available, we can get about 7,600 XP if we're only getting 15 wins in a week, which is only about two wins a day. And normally, when you're trying to get as much gold as possible and trying to maximize your time for the rewards that you get, you're going to try to get to four wins a day, probably. But the absolute minimum I would recommend you do if you want to make the most out of the Mastery Pass is to just get 15 wins a week because on your weekly wins, you get 250 XP for each of your wins and you get 15 of those in a week. Now, when you look at your daily wins, you only get 25 XP for each of your daily wins and you get 500 XP for your daily quests. So it's not necessarily that important that you play every day or get your wins every day because you could just complete your daily quests um, every three days whenever they fill up and you could get all of them done really quickly. And your 15 weekly wins could be done at any point in the week. They could be all on the weekend. They could be spread out. It doesn't really matter. So to get the most of the Mastery Pass, it doesn't mean you have to play every day. It doesn't mean it's going to take you hours of grinding and trying to work hard to get the rewards. You can actually do it kind of whenever you want, and it doesn't have to be every day. So that's quite relaxed. If you're trying to make the most of gold, then you want to try and get at least one win a day, maybe four wins a day. But the Mastery Pass doesn't rely on gold. It only relies on the XP. So it's, it's pretty easy to get there. So you're going to get 7,600 experience points roughly every week. And we have 10 weeks. So there's a good chance from that you're going to get at least 76 levels. And if you get more daily wins, and if there's any other events that come up that give you extra XP, then you're going to get even further. So there shouldn't be any worry that you're not going to get the maximum value out of the Mastery Pass. And when you go past level 70 and get to this infinite part here, you get an uncommon card reward for every level you go up past level 70. And I think there's about a 5 or 10% chance of that being upgraded to a rare as well. Um, so it is still worth it to go up past level 70 and keep going because those uncommon card rewards can add up. But if you're ever in doubt that you will play often enough to get the most out of the Mastery Pass, you don't have to buy it right now. You don't have to buy it in advance. You can wait for another eight or nine weeks. You can wait until the last day of the set if you really want to before the Mastery Pass changes to the next set. And you can decide then if you want to spend your 3,400 gems on it. And if you've only got to level 61, then you will unlock all of the rewards up to level 61 when you buy that Mastery Pass. And if you've got right to the end, then you can unlock everything. But if you're not sure and you want to leave it to the last minute, then you can do, because if you find that you're only down here somewhere, a level like 22, then you might find it's actually not really worth it to spend the 3,400 gems because the price is still the same on only getting these rewards at the bottom end. 
So I'm going to have a look at the rare cards you get on the Mastery Pass as well, because some of them are maybe worth more than others, and how playable they are is going to determine if there's really any value in those. So the first one is Fairy Slumber Party. This is a six mana sorcery where you can return all creatures to their owner's hands but each opponent who controlled a creature return this way you create two one one blue fairy creature tokens with flying so this is a card that is so much better when you have more than one opponent which isn't possible on arena so this isn't a card that's really going to see uh, very much usage it's six mana to return your opponent's creatures and you create two fairies if you had three opponents you'd make six fairies and it's going to obviously give you a lot more value. So I don't think this is going to be um, very much use, this particular card. Um, I don't think I would use it. You can decide for yourself if you think you would use this one. Okay, moving on. The next card we have along the bottom here is Lady of Laughter. This is a 5 mana, 4, 5 fairy flying creature. And a celebration at the beginning of your end step, if two or more non-land permanents entered the battlefield under your control this turn, draw a card. So this is definitely much more useful, I think, than the blue card. Five mana for a four five fly isn't terrible. It's, you know, pretty average useful stats. But the ability, the celebration ability to potentially draw a card every turn, as long as two or more non-land permanents entered the battlefield, there's no extra like mana to pay to activate this. It's actually a pretty good ability because on the turn you put this out, that's one non-land permanent. So you only have to have one other thing enter. And if you have something that generates tokens like Planeswalkers, like Archangel Elspeth at pluses one to make a one one soldier with lifelink, that's a non-land permanent entering the battlefield. There's quite a few ways in white decks that you can make extra tokens or make extra things enter the battlefield that can trigger celebration. And obviously it works well with other colors as well. Don't know if this would necessarily have a home in a kind of blue, black and white as well. Fairy deck, possibly because it's got the fairy type. But at least it's a card that's much more likely to uh, to see some usage. Okay, so the next one we have along here. It's quite funny because the picture isn't the same. It's actually got the picture, the small picture of the green card. When you hover over it, uh, it shows the black card. So I don't actually know which one you get at this level. It's either the green one or the black one. They're mixed up later on as well. But anyway, the black one here is Malevolent Witch Kite. This is a six mana um, dragon warlock creature. It's a five four with flying. And when it enters the battlefield, you can sacrifice any number of artifacts, enchantments and or tokens and draw that many cards. So it's like bargain. I don't know why they don't just have like bargain X or something. But you can basically bargain as many artifacts, enchantments or tokens as you can as you want to and you draw that many cards so a pretty good way of drawing a bunch of cards with a relatively decent creature as well six mana for a five four flyer isn't amazing but it's still pretty good and definitely being able to draw lots of cards especially in black when you might have a shield red on the board and you're gaining lots of life as well could work out to be pretty good having a big aggressive flyer is useful as well although there are other big heavy flyers in black like Archfiend of the Dross although that has the the um, downside of having the oil counters that come off and it could potentially lose the game for you but apart from that it's a pretty good creature but maybe this uh, malevolent witch kite would work much better in a deck that has you know lots of tokens or something that can be bargained away as well so that you don't run out of cards when you've got to casting your six drop so it's a pretty good card and it can definitely see play in some different decks so that might be worth playing around with, trying that one out. And the next card we have here is the red one, which is the Ogre Chitterlord, which is six mana for a six five Ogre Warrior with Menace. And whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, you create two one one black rat creature tokens that can't block. And if you control five or more rats, each rat you control gets plus two plus O until end of turn. So on turn six or whenever you get this out, you enters the battlefield, you make two other rats. If you already have one rat from somewhere else, then when this attacks on the next turn, you're going to have the two it made when it entered, the two it makes when it attacks, and hopefully a fifth one. And then all five of those rats, or more if you happen to have more, are going to get plus two. 
So there's going to be like five three one rats attacking. It's not too bad. So I could see this working in the red black rat deck. So that's one that might see some play as well. So not doing too badly. And then we have this last one up here, which has the black image on the small version. But when you hover over it, you see the green one. These things happen. Um, so this, the green one, is the Wildwood Mentor, which is only three mana. Everything else is like six mana or five mana. This is a three mana, one one creature, a tree folk. And whenever a token enters the battlefield under your control, you put a plus one, plus one counter on Wildwood Mentor. And whenever it attacks, another target attacking creature gets plus x plus x which is when x is equal to uh wildwood mentor's power so it's whenever a token enters you add a plus one plus one counter it's not once per turn there's no other limitation on it if you happen to have five tokens enter the uh, battlefield on the turn it's going to get five plus one counters on it and there are lots of ways in green and red and white in particular that can make lots of different tokens it could be blood tokens, treasure tokens, power stone tokens, or token creatures, or token auras, the rolls that come in that are new in Eldraine. It could be any of those. So you can get lots of plus one, plus one counters being put on Mentor, and it has the added ability of being able to attack and put all that power into something else as well. And when you have abilities like flying in white, or you know, Menace in red, or Trample in red or in green. There's lots of different ways you can add some evasion and get another big creature to do that damage and push through. So actually, Wildwood Mentor sounds pretty good. I'm hoping this actually comes earlier on. I'm hoping this comes earlier on in the Mastery Pass rather than being at you know level 55. I'm hoping that this is actually the black one you get here and I get the green one earlier on because I'd much rather use the green one I could definitely see myself using that in lots of different decks. So hopefully I've sold you on the idea of getting the Mastery Pass and you think it's worth the value. The only thing you might have to worry about right now, if you don't have 3,400 gems, is how are you going to get the gems to actually pay for the Mastery Pass? So I'm going to show you a few different ways. And however you choose to do it, um, you could decide to spend some actual money on the game. Uh, you can also always get the pre-order bundle, the pass bundle for the mastery pass that's $15 to unlock the mastery pass which is effectively giving you 3,400 gems for $15 which is the best rate you're ever going to get on getting gems for your money um, and then also you could just go and buy gems from the store you can uh, if you're spending a smaller amount if you're buying a smaller quantity of gems then it's going to cost you more per gem or effectively get you fewer gems per dollar so the more you want to spend the more you're going to get I don't recommend you necessarily buy gems in the store like this because the pre-order bundle makes it cheaper and there are lots of ways of getting these gems without having to spend real money so if you'd rather just play the game and earn gems from playing the game rather than spending your money then there's a few different ways we can do that as well one thing you can do is go to the events and you can have a look at the limited events so down here we have limited and you have sealed wilds of eldraine i do not recommend doing sealed because it costs you 2000 gems to enter so if you're looking for more gems uh, there's a good chance if you get anything less than six wins you're going to end up in a negative for gems and you have to get seven wins to end up in a positive and get an extra 200 gems so sealed is not going to be the ideal one for anyone trying to get more gems but you can have a look at limited you could go to quick draft and you could enter quick draws for 5,000 gold and get maybe even 100, 200, 300 gems back, as well as the cards you actually get in the draft. But I'm going to assume, because it's the easiest way to do these calculations, assume that you're going to get a 50% win rate. That's the fairest guess I can make on how much you're going to get out of these events. So if you get 300 gems in rewards for every 5,000 gold that you spend, you would need to do about 11 quick drafts to get the well that would get you 3300 gems so we're pretty close you'd have to do about 11 uh, quick drafts to get that many gems which is going to be 55,000 gold actually is quite a lot but once you get the mastery pass don't forget there's 1200 gems you get back and once you've paid for your first mastery pass and you get those gems back then you can use them towards the next mastery pass so each time a new mastery pass comes out 
you should only have to collect an extra 2200 gems to be able to afford the next one so it's actually about seven quick drafts once you start getting that rolling and seven quick drafts is um, 35,000 gold which is a little bit better and don't forget you get 4,000 gold back as well from the mastery pass so it's actually 31,000 gold you're putting in to be able to get enough gems now that doesn't mean that the mastery pass is costing you 31,000 gold because don't forget you have seven whole quick drafts worth of value that you're getting out of those as well so you're going to get another seven packs probably from the rewards maybe seven or eight because sometimes you get more than one and obviously all the cards you pick in the draft as well so the quick draft kind of is enough value by itself and the gems you could see as a bonus so that's the first way that you could get enough gems and i recommend that for people that either aren't used to drafting or don't get more than three wins in a draft on average um, if you do get more wins in draft on average then it's going to be much better for you to go down to premier draft because for premier draft if you can get three wins you get 1000 gems um, i know some of this information is going to be like repetitive if you've seen other videos of mine but it's important if this is like the first video someone's seen that they get all these details so um so bear with me if you happen to know a lot of this information already um but yeah so 1000 gems from every premier draft you do so if you're trying to get the 3400 gems to get started that's only like three and a half drafts worth of effort and if you've already got a mastery pass and you're getting the gems back from that and you only have to get the 2200 to make up the extra then there's actually only probably two drafts you need to do to get there and don't forget you also get a draft token in the rewards for the mastery pass so you can put that back into doing a premier draft so you don't even have to pay for one of them and because you can buy premier draft tokens throughout the um the life of the set every six weeks so around two uh, draft tokens for each set there's a good chance that the draft token you get in the mastery pass and the two you can buy from the store with special deals means that you're actually only going to be um, using draft tokens to get the gems back. You might not even have to spend gold in the end. So that's what I recommend if you happen to get three wins or more on average because the rewards real, really scale up from three wins on a premier draft. If you really don't like drafting, there is something else you can do. I don't necessarily recommend this, but it is an option if you want to try it out. You can do standard events or alchemy events or historic or explorer events if you want to. And if you want to do them, it only costs 2,500 gold to enter. So it's a much um, lower entry cost. And if you get three wins on average, you get 200 gems from each event. So if we're trying to get the 2,200 gems to buy the next mastery pass, once you've already started getting them, you're going to have to do 11 standard events which is going to cost you 27,500 gold. Now that's if you do happen to manage to get three wins on average. But I think it's important to keep in mind that in the standard events, you don't have to, obviously you don't have to do drafting. So you're not making up um, the best deck you can from the cards you happen to pick. In the standard events, people will be using the absolute best decks they have. So if you want to enter this, you have to make sure you have at least one really good deck and if possible maybe one that is suited to deal with the types of decks you're most likely to find so i think a lot of the time you're going to find something like a uh, mono white aggro or mono red aggro as your opponent in a standard event because they get to complete their games faster and they are pretty effective against all types of deck because even control decks or mid-range decks, if you happen to kill them before they get their big things out or stabilize and gain control of the board, then you can beat them as well. And if it's a little bit faster than other aggro decks, you can beat aggro decks with them as well. So you might want to come up with some kind of anti-aggro deck to do standard events. I haven't done them very much, but just bear in mind, it's not going to be easy necessarily. Because in this event, the gems are the biggest reward. You're not getting cards like you do in draft events. When you do quick drafts or premier drafts, probably quick drafts more than premier drafts, the people that are going to be drafting the cards and playing the games might actually care more about the cards they've picked in the draft than the rewards they get from the actual games. So they might be entering the draft event not being particularly good at draft, but just wanting to draft the cards. Or they might just give up because 
the rewards in the quick draft don't mean as much. But in standard events, expect some difficult competition. So there are some other ways you can get gems. You can get them in the store daily deals. If you have a look at the daily deals, uh, there will be ways of getting, I think it's currently 400 gems for spending 1,500 gold. Although it did change at some point, so it might change back or something. But basically you can get a few hundred gems for spending a bit of a gold. And you will also get some from having individual card rewards for rare or mythic cards that you already have four copies of. And it will give you 20 gems instead of the rare and 40 gems instead of a mythic if you happen to get that. So once you start building up a collection, you'll find that happens much more often and your gems will just start building up little bits at a time and hopefully eventually building up to enough that you can spend on the Mastery Pass. So that's basically well, almost everything I can say about the Mastery Pass. Uh, I should also mention these glowing green ones that are not normally up here. Normally you have like a pack and then an orb and then a pack and then a space and a pack and a space. Um, these extra ones that are green are actually part of the renewal egg rewards. I don't know why it's basically gone into the mastery pass. I guess it just means there's more incentive for people, even if they're not paying the gems, to continue to play more of the mastery pass and unlock more of those rewards. But all of those green glowy ones are to do with the renewal egg. And I think that means that these only come out for the like the first set of a new block like in September so you won't see this in any other mastery pass until next September as far as I'm aware and the very last thing I could say about this mastery pass which makes this one more valuable than most mastery passes is that this is the first one where we know the cards are going to be around for three years and that means that we're going to get the bigger we're going to get bigger value more value out of Having these cards for longer, because if you pick out a rare or mythic that you really like, you can play it for three years, which is pretty cool. But also, when we're looking at individual card rewards, it means that if we build up a big collection of Eldraine cards, whenever you get an individual card reward, a rare or a mythic, that you've already got four copies of, you'll get those gems instead of the card. And so having a more full collection of Wilds of Eldraine cards will mean that you get to get those extra little bonuses of gems throughout the year, throughout the next three years, that are really going to add up to quite a few gems if you could really track it easily. You'd find out how much extra value you're actually getting by having a bigger collection. It isn't just about having more cards to make more decks, although that is quite a fun aspect of it as well. If you have four copies of a rare that you never use, that still could be earning you value over time could be earning you gems over time because any individual card rewards that are that card that you've got four of that you never use could still be earning gems for you so that's all i can say on the mastery pass let me know in the comments below what you think do you always get the mastery pass is there anything about this one that you think is different and do you think any of these uh, rare cards that we're getting will see play do you think you'll use them let me know what you think in the comments and don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already and thanks for watching this one to the end. I will see you in the next one.